This clutch makes no sense to me. So, I'm gonna install it in my car. A long time ago, I actually got a handful of parts for free for the Miata. And one of the things I got was this clutch. And the first time I saw it, I was like, damn, it's a three puck design. It's a copper ceramic clutch material. And it's got this heavy duty pressure plate. It's got all the makings of being a high performance clutch with a lot of torque holding capability. But then I looked it up online and found that the torque rating is only 189 foot pounds. And that just doesn't make any sense to me. Why make a clutch with all these aggressive properties that can only hold 189 foot pounds. So what gives? Is this performance clutch just a total phony? Or am I missing something and somehow this just really nails some sweet spot of drivability and performance? I don't know yet, but today we're gonna find out. And along the way, we're gonna talk about what makes me think this thing is so weird, how clutches work in general, and then we'll drive it around to see if this thing really is as weird as I think it might be. When you make these changes and make such an aggressive clutch, you ultimately compromise some drivability. There are other clutches on the market for the Miata that hold over 300 foot-pounds with a much more comfort-oriented design. When you run a pucked clutch with an aggressive friction material, you lose a lot of drivability. This thing is gonna engage like a bat out of hell. It's gonna be like an on-off switch, I think. So, before we go any further, let's go drive the Miata how it is now so we can compare drivability before and after we install this wild little thing. Let's see. Start letting the clutch out. So it starts to engage right about there. Oh, it's so smooth. You can just do that all day. You can do it without thinking about it at all. It's so easy to drive right now. My biggest concern is that we're gonna ruin the drivability of this car. The engagement window is gonna become very short. It's gonna basically go from fully disengaged to fully engaged very quickly. I think it's gonna feel like I think it's gonna feel worse. I, I, I hope it doesn't feel like absolute ass but it sure might. I think it'll maybe, it'll be a little bit shorter window, but it's not gonna be as bad as you guys are saying it's, That's my prediction. What do you think it's gonna be? I think it's gonna be awful. I think it's gonna be like an on-off switch. All right, well, let's we'll see who's right. <clears throat> okay, we got the car all nice and safely jacked up. To get to the clutch, obviously, we need to get the transmission out. So to get the transmission out, there's some stuff we need to get out of the way first. We need to get the exhaust off. Okay, exhaust is out of the way. Look at how fresh that trans fluid is. It's like, we only, it's like we only put that stuff in there a month and a half ago. Okay, so we got the drive shaft disconnected, just four bolts here at the rear, and then we should be able to pop it off and it'll just pull right on out of the transmission. Nice and easy. Just look like at that. Now, if we hadn't drained the transmission already, we'd be leaking some fluid right now. I need this thing to swing out of the way so I can drop the transmission. It's called the power plant frame and it ties the transmission back here to the diff or to the rear subframe. All right, sweet. Uh, now I'm taking off the slave cylinder and then it's time to pop out these bell housing bolts and take the transmission out. All right, we've been over this before, but listen, it's no good to rely on your brain to remember stuff, trust me. So rather than trying to remember where bolts came out of or where they go back, just make yourself a little diagram. This is our bell housing, and these are all the bolt positions. And this is where they came from, and the like, you know, the way they came out, front or back. So, makes it a lot easier to put things back in. All right, so there's a couple uh, electrical connectors on top of the transmission. Now that we've got it about halfway down, we can get our hands up to get to them. Okay, that should be all the electrical stuff. it's too tall on the transmission jack to make it out from under the car. So I'm just gonna pull it back, then I'm gonna drag it off the jack and uh, drag it out from under here. She's out and it only took eight minutes. So we finally got the transmission out. Now we just need to take off the old clutch and flywheel. Now, when you go to do that, you put your wrench on, the thing spins because it's just connected to your crankshaft. So the trick is to reinstall one of your bell housing bolts and you get a pry bar. You can hold against the flywheel to turn in, you know, your bolt loose. Uh, but you can also just buy impact tools. Ow! Ow! Pressure plate for you. Electric desk for you. Now we gotta get this flywheel off. 
All right, so this is the stock flywheel. Uh, that means this puppy weighs a lot. Uh, so another little trick, I just put another bell housing bolt into the other bottom hole uh, so that I don't really have to worry about catching the flywheel when it comes off. All I gotta do is just make sure it doesn't tip forward. Okay, flywheel hoot. All right, so we've got the flywheel off now. We can see the back of our engine. This is like the back of our crankshaft where the flywheel mounts up. And surrounding that, this seal, which always tends to leak, is called your rear main seal. And if you're ever doing a clutch job, you should also do your rear main seal because you're already in there. It's right here. Uh, I like to use just a variety of picks. You can also use flathead screwdrivers, but what's important is that you don't scratch either surface on either side of the seal. There she is. If you had to get in here just to do a rear main seal, boy, that would be annoying. All right, so we've got our old clutch out of the car and it looks pretty good. It's got a lot of life left. Uh, like I said, just, we didn't really need to do a clutch in this car, so this thing would be good for a long time to come. But let's go inside and compare this thing side by side to our new fancy clutch. So after looking at these things, you can tell pretty quickly that they look a lot different. This is that organic full face disc that's great for comfortable street driving and this is our nasty, crazy three-putt clutch. So this aggressive material gets clamped really hard because it's only being clamped in three little spots. So this is the stock flywheel, and she's a thick Betty. This new one, ooh, it's nice and light. But why do you even want a lightweight flywheel? Well, your flywheel is bolted to the crankshaft on your engine, and it's spinning anytime your engine is running. So that gives your engine momentum because this thing is heavy. So when you've got a heavy flywheel, it's hard to stop your engine. It's a lot harder to stall, but it also takes a while for your revs to climb up and to fall back down. So with a lighter flywheel, those revs can move a lot quicker, but it's also a lot easier to stall off the line because you have less momentum keeping the engine running. Then we've also got our pressure plates, and I mean, they look pretty freaking identical, except that this one just looks old. Although I do believe that this has an increased clamping capacity or clamping capability over the stock one. All right, so now that we've torn out all this stuff to get our transmission out to get down to our clutch, we've got it out and we've looked at it side by side with our new crazy one, my opinion is still the same. I think this thing is still gonna drive considerably worse with this clutch. Uh, yeah, my opinion has not changed. Let's get cracking, boys. The flywheel and the pressure plate will have like a light film of oil on them for shipping so that they don't rust. But that would be very bad if you installed them with that oil on there. It would completely ruin the friction disc, basically. So, you gotta make sure you wipe it down. One of the things we need to do on the transmission is replace our release bearing, our throw out bearing. So to do that, we're gonna pop off our clutch fork, which is there's a little spring back here. Okay, this is about as good as you're ever gonna be able to see what's going on in here. When you push the clutch pedal, that pushes on this fork, which pushes the release bearing forward, which pushes on our diaphragm spring, which releases all the pressure on our pressure plate, which releases the friction disc, and the flywheel just kinda undoes that sandwich. All right, so let's clean this thing up now and put it back together. Much cleaner, and I'm much wetter. But I'm also gonna put on a nice new coat of grease. Uh, not just any old grease, some nice high temp molly grease uh, that should stay in place for a long time. So you also need to grease up these splines, but very lightly because that puppy is spinning. And if you put a bunch of grease on that and then that grease slings out onto your clutch disc, you just killed your clutch. Okay, so we're down here. I've got all my flywheel hardware, just reusing the stock stuff. Uh, and now I'm gonna apply my new thread locker. All right, on the Miata, there's no way to put this thing on wrong, but on some cars there are, so you gotta pay attention. Okay, now it's time to torque, I think. Well, the last thing we need to do is wipe it down again, because I just made a huge mess of it. You can see the hub sticks out a little further on this side. That goes towards the gearbox. So we'll put it up in here, get our pressure plate in place. We should get it to slide on. Okay, so this is our clutch alignment tool and pretty much every clutch you ever get is gonna come with one of these. And the point of it is to make sure that your clutch disc is centered because it's kind of floating right now. We could tighten this pressure plate up and have the clutch disc be way off center and then it's gonna be impossible to get our transmission back in. So this basically simulates the transmission being in place and the front of this slips right into the pilot bushing. Now let's put that transmission back in. Uh, yeah, how are we gonna do this? The, the whole floor, the whole trans jack not fitting under here thing is pretty annoying. Put it on your belly. I know, but I, the, it's, I don't really want to, is the thing. Mm. Ow, f <sighs> 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 
power plant frame is in the way of my left knee and my right knee can't hold up a transmission. Come on, leg. Okay, come on, honey. No, losing it. Oh, ah, my knee. Oh, boy. All right, so we're jamming the shifter back in real quick uh, so we can try to put it in gear. Tight. And uh, then we'll be able to put the drive shaft in the output of the transmission and spin it so that we spin the input shaft so we can change how the splines meet up between the clutch and the transmission. All right, so right now the splines aren't mating up, so we'll spin one of them and hopefully they'll find yeah. each other. Ugh. Wiggling. There we go, there we go, there we go. Is it? Yep. Time to bust this puppy back out. That goddamn masterpiece. My old used cardboards be for sale on shop.donut.media for only $100 a piece. Okay, that's good enough for now. Uh, that'll hold the back of the transmission up. Now we can go ahead and put all our bell housing bolts back in, uh, cinch the transmission back down to the engine, and then probably go to sleep. I'm gonna cry deep, deep tears. Okay, so that about does it for tonight. Uh, we got the old stuff out, new stuff back in, but it's dark, it's late, I'm tired, so I'll get up nice and early in the morning, button this thing up, and then we'll go drive it and see if we just ruined the way this car drives. And if we did, God, I'm really looking forward to putting that old stock clutch back in. All right, so we got back at it nice and early this morning. Uh, Eddie just got here, but I got a lot of stuff done already. So reinstalling all this stuff is pretty much exactly the same as taking it off, just in reverse. So the drive shaft's back in, the exhaust is back on, all the bell house bolts are tight and torqued. All right, so we got our shifter out of the uh, transmission in the old Miata. And uh, where it goes in, this is called the turret. It usually is pretty empty like it is right now, but I'm gonna turkey baster in some fresh fluid get things shifting real nice. Alrighty, it's time to fill the transmission back up with some gear oil. Uh, we've done this before, I've showed you how to do it, but it's real easy. We're just gonna pump fluid up into our fill plug until it spills out, and that's how we know it's full. Okay, there she goes, dripping out. All right, so I just wanted to take a break from the madness for a minute and give you guys some honest advice on what you should do if you're looking for a clutch for yourselves, because obviously what we got going on is a little weird. So if you're shopping for a clutch, you should first be honest with yourself about how much power you're making or how much power you intend to make on whatever you're putting a clutch in. Then once you know how much power that is in terms of torque, then you can select a clutch that can hold that much torque. And basically what you wanna do is get a clutch that'll hold the torque you're gonna make without being too far overkill. Like in the Miata, if we had put a, a clutch that could hold 500 foot-pounds, we'd be dealing with a whole bunch of drawbacks from that aggressive clutch design that we don't really need. So there's no reason to go too overkill on a clutch. Just get what can hold the power you're making and do it as comfortably as possible. So bleeding your slave cylinder on your clutch is pretty much just like bleeding your brakes. So I'm sucking out what I can and uh, then we'll fill it back up with fresh fluid and then I'll go down below and I'm gonna crack the bleeder open and I'm gonna let gravity do its thing and just kind of let some fluid flow through for a minute. Then we'll tighten it up, and then I'll have my boy Eddie get in the driver's seat and pump the clutch up, and then I'll tell him to hold it. And then when he's holding it, I'll crack the bleeder open, some air and fluid should shoot out, do that a couple times, and then the clutch will be bled, baby. All right, so we've still got the car on the stands. I'm gonna start it up real quick and put it in gear just to make sure we're not hearing any funny noises, make sure everything seems like it's fine. Okay, so the flywheel's spinning, or my wheel's spinning. Okay, so that means the clutch is not just dragging or anything like that, that's good. So now we'll put it in first. Just slowly let the clutch out. First time it ever engages. There she goes, wheels are spinning, I presume. No weird noises, no weird shutters, vibrations, or shakes. We got a new clutch. Now I can't tell what it's gonna feel like from up here because we're not on the ground. The tires aren't loaded up, so it's not like we're actually pushing the car forward, so. Still not sure what the engagement's actually gonna feel like, uh, but we'll find out soon. Yeah, 
All right, with that, the interior is finished and I'm pretty sure the exterior is good to go. Then time to put this thing on the ground and go drive. See what this thing feels like, finally. All right, let's see how this thing feels. Okay, so just trying to take off as smoothly as possible. You can definitely tell that it's a much more aggressively engaging clutch and the engagement window is a lot smaller. It goes from being completely disengaged, you feel it start to engage, and then it's engaged. But it's not that bad. It's uh, pretty dang drivable, really. I mean, I don't know. I was a little bit concerned going into this that we were actually gonna really wreck the way this thing drove as far as, you know, being easy to just hop in and go for a cruise, you know, and not like feeling like it's a chore to drive. And listen, the clutch pedal is a little bit heavier. The engagement is a little bit harsher and more aggressive. And the engagement window is a little bit shorter. But it's not that bad. And we've got more torque holding capability out of it. And honestly, 190 foot pounds, even if that is the, an accurate rating, that's probably all the torque I'm gonna make on at least the first iteration of a turbo build on this car, I really. And then you know what? It can probably hold 200 foot pounds if it can hold 190 right? I don't know, but we're going to find out someday. All right, let's go back to the house. Um, you know what? I'm in a good mood now. I'm happy. We didn't ruin the car. The clutch is on. The hard work is done. Now we're just left to reap the benefits. And that's what this is all about. All right, so we got our little three putt clutch installed. And the truth is, it's not that bad. It's not overly aggressive. It's very drivable. And it does give the car kind of a sporty feel. So you know what? I think today was a win. Uh, I am a little concerned that it only holds 189 foot-pounds, but we'll put that to the test once we strap a turbo onto this thing, which is hopefully going to happen sooner than later. So what else did we learned today? Well, we learned that you can struggle your way through a clutch in the driveway. It's going to be difficult. Don't kid yourself into thinking that it's not, but it's doable. You will struggle. You saw it. You saw me ride that struggle bus, but hey, it's all worth it in the end, and we do it for you guys anyway. And if this is your first car video or your thousandth, it doesn't matter. You're welcome here. We do this every single day, new car content every day. And something funny usually happens, and we try to be informative. So I hope you guys are learning something watching me struggle. So if a video every day isn't enough for you, you got to check out our subreddit. Check out our Facebook group. We're a whole dang community. So hit that subscribe button and join us. We'll see you guys here tomorrow. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. Roll that title. <laughs>